Hey, what's up everyone? I'm your host, Snows, for Boot Sequence, and this, well, well, this is your Boot Sequence. Roll the intro. The Facebook F8 Day 2 brought us more info on Project Santa Cruz. If you didn't know, Santa Cruz is a project Oculus has been working on for a while to bring VR to the next level. Right now, the main issues are field of view, resolution, hand tracking, and field of focus. And Santa Cruz is supposed to fix these issues. While resolution is something that is easy to fix with a simple larger, wider, and more dense screen, hand tracking and field focus are pretty interesting issues. They plan on using marker-based tracking for the hands like in Hollywood movies with the little balls, and they want to use AI to pinpoint the location of all of your fingers. For field of focus, they plan to use a very focal screen. Instead of having lenses that move like in camera lenses to focus, they're going to move the screen in and out to allow you to see clearly when things are close to your face. You can see here the difference between very focal on and off. As the objects approach the person's face, the screen moves to allow for a clearer view. It's pretty cool to see the headset in action and apparently it's silence and you don't notice it shifting around. They're also fixing the field of view by using lenses that go beyond the usual 110 degrees into 140 degrees. It's still pretty short of the 210 degrees that our eyes actually see. The prototype is called Half Dome and we still have no idea when they plan to have a product ready. Anyways, if you do want to see the keynote for your Yourself, the link is in the description below. Keep in mind though that the Oculus part is split at the beginning and at the end. Moving on, we've got Intel getting pummeled again. Man, Intel, what's happening these days? According to German computer magazine Heiss.de, Heiss.de, Hoi, Heiss, Heise.de. There are eight new Spectre class vulnerabilities that impact Intel and ARM processors. The impact on AMD processors is still unknown though. As usual, Intel has been informed and no details will be released to give Intel a reasonable amount of time to develop patches. You see that? Reasonable amount of time. Not like CTS Labs attempt at a hit job on AMD. Anyways, Intel apparently already has patches developed and they will roll out this month and in August in two rounds of updates. Let's just hope that those fixes don't affect performance again like the first round of patches. Alright, let's talk brown and beige with some new Noctua fans. Now you might think, well this is a boring subject, but bear with me here. Noctua's new $30 NF-A12s are apparently so good that Noctua is selling a 120 to 140 millimeter adapter because their 120 models outperforms most 140 millimeter fans. Now if that doesn't scream confidence in their product, I don't know what does. Well, maybe the fact that they've kept their fans brown and beige for so long. The new fans will excel in high pressure and high flow application, taking the flagship spot for the company. I mean, look at it. There's a bit of metal showing on the fan. They really don't care about what their fans look like. Moving on into the smartphone game. The LG G7 ThinQ has been released and well, it's just another flagship smartphone. Honestly, there's not much there. It probably will perform as well as all of the other phones in its category without standing out too much. The red smartphone on the other end is a different story. Red founder Jim Janar says, we have no idea whatsoever what we are doing. And that, that is awesome. Let me explain. I personally think that the best way to find a fresh perspective on something is to start tinkering from nothing. And I think that that's what Red is doing. Now we don't know if Red will be able to change the game like it did with 8K cameras, but I'm rooting for them. Just not by putting $1,200 on a pre-order. And lastly in smartphone news, the new OnePlus 6 has leaked. I mean, it's not really a leak since OnePlus isn't that secretive, but what we know is that the notch wearing phone has a glass back panel, similar to, you guessed it, the notch wearing iPhone X. Man, Samsung is really the only manufacturer that refuses the notch and I absolutely applaud them for that. Personally, I just think it's dumb. And now it's fun fact time. I once received a $100 tip for helping someone random outside of Best Buy put their TVs inside of their car. I just saw the woman struggling and I helped and she gave me a hundred bucks. So help people in need my dudes, 
there might not always be a $100 reward, but you never know. All right, so that's pretty much it for the news today, guys. Have yourselves a great day. Thank you so much for the support. We're already at 4,000 subscribers, or close to, if I'm not mistaken. You can click right here to see the latest video, and right here, yeah, right here, to subscribe to the channel. I'm Snows, stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next video. I don't know why, but there's a bag of rocks here. Just like a literal bag of pebbles.